Hello everyone, welcome back to the interview. I'm your host, Susan Lee MacDonald. In 1958, a man by the name of Van Cliburn played in front of an audience in Russia, warming the hearts of so many people who were there to see him. And during the Cold War, when it was difficult for Americans and Russians to get along, music helped to bring a lot of these people together. An Asian performer by the name of Son Yorum won the competition that Van Cliburn won many years ago, bringing so much joy to a lot of the people who are in that audience. Now, I'm going to be interviewing Son Yorum today, and I think that you're going to love this amazing pianist. the youngest pianist ever to win the Oberlin International Piano Competition in 1999. Best performance of the Mozart Concerto at the International Tchaikovsky Competition 2011. A native of South Korea, Son Yurim has made record-breaking achievements as a pianist. 20 years have passed since she began playing the piano at the age of three. And now, to the blossoming artist, life would be incomplete without the piano. She says that she has never imagined what her life could look like if she hadn't taken up the piano. Son Yerim is known for her bold and daring qualities, having traveled abroad on her own, carrying just a backpack to attend international piano competitions the deeply inspiring story of the pianist who captivates the audience with her breathtaking performances begins right now. Sonia Rem, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for being on the interview. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have a beautiful name, and I'm curious what the meaning of Yal mm -hmm. and Um is. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it ten notes, by any <laughs> Of course not. It's not, it's not separated. It's just um, um, one word. Okay. Yeah, it means, um, let's say in English, um, maybe uh, blooming something or um, mm. um, bearing fruits. Like that. It's lovely. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks. Is that a name that your father or your family chose for yeah, you? Yeah, my mom. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really seems like your whole career has been just, you know, one bloom after <laughs> another. To have someone like yourself who's traveled all over the world mm -hmm. and, you know, here in Korea, um, you know, back here, uh, how does it make you feel to be back in your home country? Well, it's always very special because it's um, it's the audience that um, kept seeing me since I was really little, and mm -hmm. they uh, saw how I grew up and how my music changed by every stage. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 always very special. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. You were recently in Washington D.C., my hometown. Oh yeah, I heard. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you were there for the 60th anniversary of the U.S.-Korea alliance, alliance. <laughs> and uh, performing in front of uh, President Park Geun-hye. Is that all right. Right? right? So tell me about that show. It was a great experience to oh. play in such a different kind of audience. <laughs> where, did, where did you play in D.C.? Uh, in Smithsonian Museum. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I imagine that also being called to go to Washington, D.C. for mm -hmm. this very special performance mm -hmm. must have been a real honor for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It really was. How did yeah. you feel when you got the call to go there? Well, yeah, I was really excited. Uh, that was only just two weeks ahead or something, kind of in a hurry of um, time. And mm -hmm. I I actually uh, had to be in Lithuania for another concert of mine. And oh my then, goodness. yeah, I had to cancel one rehearsal mm -hmm. because of that. But I, yeah, of course I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> so you were just in Lithuania, mm -hmm. and then uh, did you come straight back to Seoul afterwards? No, I actually went back to America mm -hmm. once again, and I visited some friends of mine there, mm -hmm. and then, yeah. I actually um, enjoyed a little bit of vacation too. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, uh, where are you living these days? Are you living in Korea or out of Korea? Um, I have my um, sort of base in Hanover, Germany. Okay. Yeah, I consider that as my home. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I also travel much, mm -hmm. so I can't really think of any place that I stay more than 
a few weeks or a few mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I never do that. Yeah. So. <laughs> so what is it like for you living in Germany? It's actually great. I, I love the city and I love the people there and I have my f many friends of mine there and I also have my teacher mm -hmm. whom I love so much and mm -hmm. it's, it's great. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. You know, I'm curious that, you know, you having lived in Korea mm -hmm. for a good part of your childhood, mm -hmm. uh, now living abroad, what's that experience like for you? Mm, well, I think, I mean, if I look back now, mm -hmm. then I feel very, um, very lucky, mm -hmm. and fortunate to be, um, to be here. I, I mean, the fact that I grew up here mm -hmm. in Korea, which made me um, to feel strongly um, belonging to here. Mm -hmm. And it's not like that I always was, um, yeah, it, it's, it's somehow I feel that I really belong to this country. I feel strong base in here. And mm -hmm. I think that's quite um, healthy for artists and musicians who mm -hmm. actually have to uh, um, be creative and be innovative. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I feel very fortunate. So you feel a, a strong bond of being Korean and right. having, you know, having been from here. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think it is about uh, having grown up here that gives you the strength to be able to you know, do what you're doing? Mm, well, it's like when I see some people who didn't really have, um, don't really have um, strong identity mm -hmm. of um, being anything. Like mm -hmm. I can, I I strongly feel that I'm Korean and I have my um, uh, spread it um, inside of um, this culture. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, I think it's. I don't know how to explain exactly, but it's. I think it's um, really helping for me uh, to be an artist. Mm -hmm. So, Yodam, you've had a recital here in Korea for the first time, is that right, recently? Uh, it wasn't really my very first recital because I, of course, had many recitals before, but mm -hmm. then it was um, uh, maybe the first concert that I um, presented my name as a recitalist, list okay. and I made all program myself and ah. that was the first time and I mean because before I uh, was well maybe part of the concert series of um, maybe Kumo Art Hall that I they see. were presenting um, some composers who had um, bicentennial anniversary year mm -hmm. or something so I played Chopin and least recital okay. in their concert series but mm -hmm. this was just just only, you. Yeah, myself. Only so, you. Yeah. <laughs> the spotlight was completely on you and you yeah. alone. Yeah. <laughs> so. What was the preparation involved in doing that? Oh uh, well, many things combined because um, I, I, it took me quite a while to um, make the program mm -hmm. at first, and I because I really thought so many about so many things mm. together. So it took me quite a while. And then also I played in the other cities before Seoul. So that was also another whole tour and yeah. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoyed it so much. It was my first time. And so were you able to practice the, the pieces that you're going to play for that recital mm -hmm. in other cities as well? Mm -hmm. Or um, you know, are, are you basically kind of recycling things from <laughs> other places? Or are these just completely new things that you haven't played before? Uh, one of the things uh, Prokofiev Sonata that I played in the uh, in the last um, part of the recital that mm -hmm. was the piece that I uh, used to play maybe three four years ago mm -hmm. in mostly in America and yeah I I like the piece so much but I I never really had any chance to play that in Korea so mm -hmm. I I thought maybe it's a good chance so I I chose that and other things um actually um most of the things I I learned for this recital so okay. yeah. A very special recital took place at the Seoul Arts Center in March 2013. It was the first solar headlining recital of a young award-winning pianist who's well-renowned worldwide, Son Yeorum. She delighted the audience with a diverse program consisting of familiar classical pieces as well as those that required her to master advanced techniques. Uh, 
as I hear you play these very different songs, um, I can tell that they're very difficult to play. <laughs> How long does it take for you to kind of master um, most songs on average? Mm, on average, mm -hmm. um, well, to be honest, it, it takes shorter than other people. I mean, mm -hmm. to me, it's mm -hmm. I, I learn fast and I or read the score fast mm -hmm. and I, I do it quick but it's um it's not only about that you read the music and you play on a stage mm -hmm. it's it's so about um how you understand this music and how you mm -hmm. digest this music mm -hmm. for yourself and also for audience mm -hmm. so it's it really depends on the music mm -hmm. and yeah for each piece mm -hmm. it's different so. are you ever surprised by how quickly <laughs> you learn because i'm sure that uh, there is you know s there's always competition right between oh, right. other pianists <laughs> and whatnot and you probably know that other people maybe it takes them uh, you know, a certain amount of time, and you've done it. You know, in a short amount of time. <laughs> like, is there a kind of an internal pride? Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm the bomb because. <laughs> well, not not really for that, but I I know I'm I'm doing fast, mm -hmm. quicker than other people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, actually, I sometimes I do when I'm really in a hurry mm -hmm. of time that I have to learn this concerto while I'm doing other things and mm -hmm. and then I'm still doing that and mm -hmm. I'm thinking like oh yeah I, I can learn mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's yeah just that's that's a simple um, approach for music um, at the first stage but then the um, inner stage comes um, of course a longer procedure and much deeper um, considerations and mm -hmm. yeah. Just like a movie or a novel, I know that the piano pieces also have some type of a story. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what do you do to try to understand the, the story behind what uh, is, is written? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing I would do for almost every competition would be maybe to learn about this competition itself mm -hmm. when they when the composers were writing this mm -hmm. piece so that'll um, make a path naturally to uh, directly to the composer so that we would understand how they felt and mm -hmm. what kind of circumstances they were in uh, while they were composing mm -hmm. and things like that then we would be able to understand more about this composition itself mm -hmm. and and also the um, um, kind of um, maybe the history of music mm -hmm. I mean uh, according to the time that they were writing this piece and it mm -hmm. all actually makes um, better connection to the piece interesting I think so yeah so you're kind of a uh, music historian in a little <laughs> way too because <laughs> oh, you have I to learn to. a little bit yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and when you're um, when you're trying to analyze this piece what do you think is one of the most difficult things about analyzing a piece um well it's simple because um simply we can't, we cannot know 100% um, of this competition because they just, I mean, the, what they wrote in the score, it's just so limited information. Mm -hmm. And so that we have to guess and we have to um, really just um, just to analyze, but we can't really understand 100%. So mm -hmm. we, yeah, there, there's of course always a gap mm -hmm. between, yeah, what they really meant and what we are trying to understand so mm -hmm. but it's yeah I mean to minimize that it's is our maybe mission or mm -hmm. goal <laughs> so what do you do when you don't have a whole lot of background information and mm -hmm. you're trying to get some inspiration mm -hmm. about knowing how to play this piece uh, then we try to believe I, I mean I do I, I try to believe that maybe what the composer meant was to was that maybe to um, rely to the performer mm -hmm. and they would like the performers to be as free as they mm -hmm. can be and mm -hmm. as creative as they can be mm -hmm. and yeah that's what I try to believe mm -hmm. in in those circumstances. That's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned the, the freedom to be able to perform however you want to perform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know a lot of people who come to any of your performances may have heard the same music mm -hmm. played by someone else, right. you know, whether uh, alive or you know mm -hmm. past. Mm -hmm. And they might compare you, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. with with what they heard on, mm -hmm. on this you know CD or mm -hmm. on this vinyl record. Mm -hmm. um, do you ever have people come up to you and say, you know? 
I preferred it when so and so <laughs> played this. You know, why did you play it like that? <laughs> Do you ever have that happen to you? Uh, not yet. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah, I mean, to hear your story may may happen to me mm -hmm, <laughs> in, in the mm -hmm. future. But yeah. Or do you ever feel like uh, you know I heard this version, mm -hmm. but I want to do it a little bit differently mm -hmm. because uh, I don't agree with how they express this particular mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I always w what's what I always feel mm -hmm. into. Yeah, when I heard the great recordings, even even though it's great, but mm -hmm. of course there are some parts that I I don't agree and mm -hmm. or I I think I may do a little bit differently mm -hmm. and things a like little that. bit better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. You're I like yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of a uh, stimulation too for mm -hmm. for the performance mm -hmm. too. Yeah, to be able to keep keep up yeah, yeah yeah that's pretty exciting <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd love to hear you play would okay. you mind playing something for us of course not <laughs> okay sure. great thank you thank you <laughs>to the past mm -hmm. and talk about your first introduction to piano. Mm -hmm. um, I heard that you started playing when you were three years old, is that right? Three and a half. Three and a half, okay. <laughs> <laughs> three, three years and Big six difference. months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now is that uh, Korean age or is that uh, international yeah, age? International age. Okay, yeah, right. So I was five in Korean. Okay, yeah. so how did you decide or did your parents decide for you to play piano? Well, I think both because mm -hmm. I, I really liked um, playing with the piano. I'm not playing on the piano, mm -hmm. but I... I we had a piano in my home. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my mother's, and I, I really loved the piano, the sound, and yeah, how it looks. Mm -hmm. So I actually really wanted to study when I was two and a half. Oh. <laughs> so we went to the uh, uh, kind of private school, private teacher, and she was kind of rejecting uh, me because she thought I was too little. Mm -hmm. And then so I went to the very same place um, year after. I see. And she took me. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> so at age three and a half, mm -hmm. uh, do you remember what it was like for you? I mean, you must have been so tiny <laughs> to be sitting on the bench, you know, on the <laughs> piano. Oh. Um, do you remember the first kinds of lessons that she taught you? Oh yeah, I clearly remember the day that I went to mm -hmm. uh, went to her, um, and she kind of uh, recognized that I have this absolute peach perfect pitch okay so um, I mean I'm from a small city and she hasn't really seen any other kids like me <laughs> so mm -hmm. I mean it's small yeah. the city is small so yeah. you're from the Kangwon province is right. that right, right. okay one right. Jewish one Jew, yeah. yeah. So it's a small city. She never really mm -hmm. seen any other kid like me. So yeah, that was. Um, she kind of was surprised, and mm -hmm. yeah. And I remember I wasn't really uh, getting bored to be sitting on a piano. I mean, because uh, all the other kids were war. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really. I mean, I I could stay as long as I I could. So yeah. <laughs> the teacher was kind of yeah amazed so by how long I could sit. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> sit on the piano. Yeah. Now, so. as a as a young child, uh, you said that you had the the desire to to play mm. for long hours. Mm -hmm. uh, how long were you practicing it? Well, I remember actually. Um, it's 
it's pretty amazing to think about it now, but I s practiced literally three, four hours when I was already five or six. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, that was, I think, pretty much for kids, but yeah. Interesting. So you, you were basically a child prodigy, and <laughs> from, from what I understand, you went to middle school, middle school mm -hmm. and you skipped high school altogether and went straight to college. Oh, uh, <laughs> How did that happen? Uh, because my college, uh, the conservatory mm -hmm. that I went to, it's um, Korean National University of Arts. Mm -hmm. They had this kind of a um, system that they would allow um, kids to skip their high school and to come to the college directly and mm -hmm. they would stay with the other college students, so oh. I was just one of them. I mean, there were also other kids mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. me. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, lucky you because, you know, Korea is, of course, famous for those grueling <laughs> college entrance exams. So True. did you have to take any of those kinds of exams too? Uh, not really. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I also went to the regular middle school, so mm -hmm. I, I smelled kind of bit of it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're kind of like looking at your friends and they're all jealous because you didn't have to take those exams, but yeah. you just went straight into college. Yeah. Being so young in college, it must have been a little bit of a culture shock for you because mm. every one of your peers must have been that much older. <laughs> how, how was it for you to adjust to college life? Um, well, actually, it wasn't really about the age itself, mm -hmm. but I, it was a culture shock for me uh, to see so many musicians mm -hmm. because I didn't really go to any other arts school before, so that was my first time to, mm. yeah, be in a part of musician groups, and um, yeah, I actually enjoyed it very much. To mm -hmm. uh, the factor that I had so many friends to talk about music bef because I really had no one before, mm -hmm. and I yeah, I liked it very much. Mm. With with so many other uh, performers and musicians that you went to school with mm -hmm. at the at the conservatory, now did you ever feel like well, I got so much praise for so many years playing alone, and, but now there is competition. <laughs> there are other people who are really good too. Did you ever feel a competitive spirit to kind of spur you on a little bit too? Yeah, of course I, I felt the kind of tensions between mm -hmm. people and between friends and mm -hmm. they were they were friends, but also, you know, this this word friend of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of yeah, kind of intense relationship. But I yeah. I think it's also very um very valuable for all of us that we because I mean we musicians are growing up together and mm. we were staying up together and we will be until the end of our life will be with same kind of people almost mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and so I think yeah it, it was really a lot of fun to me at that's least. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. Son Yeonul is often called a genius pianist for her ability to play various repertoires and have mastery of techniques and skills. While she may have been a natural from birth, she didn't simply rely on her gift. She honed her natural talent by devoting all her time to practicing the piano, a reason why she is now a world-class pianist. I heard that when you were young, mm. that you took a backpack and traveled by yourself <laughs> for an international competition mm. for piano. Is that true? Yeah, I was always myself. Um, and how old were you when you did that? Uh, the thing that I uh, just told you before, it's um, when I was 12, when 12. I went to St. Petersburg, I, I was alone there. Okay. Yeah, wow. so. That's, that's pretty intense and <laughs> very adventurous of you because a lot of people don't feel comfortable letting their kids travel alone. <laughs> um, I know as a child I traveled alone by myself, but in Korea it's not really 
normal or it's not really average that people would do that. Uh -huh. how, did you, how did you manage to travel alone? So maybe it's not me, but my parents. <laughs> That's <laughs> not me. But yeah, well, I was actually, as I told you before, that I wasn't really that small as, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, how I looked. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was kind of, maybe I was a mature kid that we never really thought that it's a natural thing, so mm -hmm. we were just, mm -hmm. yeah, no one was really against of the idea that mm -hmm. I'm going abroad myself, so mm -hmm. I, I just did it, but when I actually uh, looked at my siblings when they were growing up and uh, when they were about that age, mm -hmm. I was thinking to myself that, how how did my parents <laughs> just send me to abroad myself? I mean, it's just <laughs> so so small and wow. yeah. But then yeah, at that time I wasn't really feel any mm -hmm. awkward. I mean, it seems like you're a very independent person, <laughs> and playing piano mm -hmm. is a, a solo thing. I mean, of course right, you've got yeah. the mentors and you've got you know a lot of support from your family mm -hmm. and whoever, but this is something that you have to kind of get the fuel from within mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. and persevere. So mm -hmm. maybe it was just a part of your personality to be able to uh, travel mm -hmm. alone mm -hmm. because you were already trained to to be independent as a piano, you know. Um, maybe yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. Maybe you're right because piano pianists are really mm -hmm. just they are always the uh, they always go to stage themselves and mm -hmm. I mean even the violinists or the singers they will always go f with the pianist but mm -hmm. then we always are. My, uh, ourselves mm -hmm. in on a stage, so mm -hmm. it's yeah, different. Do you do you feel that you're a very independent and adventurous person, just in general? Uh, well, actually, um, apart from music, not mm. not really. <laughs> <laughs> but then within the music, maybe yeah. that I always try to find some new things about mm -hmm. music and yeah, but. Apart from music, not really. <laughs> <laughs> How are you otherwise? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm really just very normal and I'm, I'm really kind of not active person at all, but mm -hmm. in music I, I am. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, I think I, I also find a lot of different things in myself um, wi within the music, so mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like two different personalities somehow. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the musician uh, Yarum like, <laughs> if you had to describe her? Uh, I think it's a lot better person <laughs> than what I really am. <laughs> because I, yeah, I'm sort of also adventurous and also I'm kind of um, not as lazy as what I <laughs> in lazy. usual days. <laughs> no one would think that you're lazy. <laughs> I am very much. Really? <laughs> yeah, I am very lazy. But yeah, as a musician, I'm not so much mm. lazy that much. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I love to learn new things. Mm -hmm. and uh, what you said about the lazy part, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to kind of think about <laughs> what you said because Obviously, with your playing uh, piano, mm -hmm. you're definitely not lazy. I mean, <laughs> no one can get to the level of, of where you've been um, <laughs> being lazy. Um, but maybe because you're so passionate about that work mm -hmm. that you've been doing for so long mm -hmm. that other areas you just need to kind of relax a little bit, you know? <laughs> and take Thank a, you for saying that. Take a little break. Because <laughs> if you're perfect at everything, there's no hope for the rest of us. <laughs> So thank you for <laughs> considering yourself a little lazy. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, that's, that's a great funny. perspective. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were traveling alone, uh, so young, uh, were there any special things that happened to you or any memorable things? Well, yeah, I mean, there were so many things that I even <laughs> can't really spell out everything. But I, yeah, of course, a lot of things happened. And maybe the special thing was I, uh, the thing that I experienced in Italy when I came there as a 15 and a half year old mm -hmm. girl mm -hmm. and um, I went there for the competition and uh, that was a small city by the name of Vercelli, it's mm -hmm. near Milan and I went there and obviously no one spoke English <laughs> and I couldn't really navigate myself mm -hmm. in that city, I just couldn't find the theater that I had to go to. So I asked everyone, and <laughs> everyone actually explained to me what I couldn't understand. Mm. They were like, yeah, there, go there. Mm -hmm. and I just couldn't understand anything. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of, you know, um, wandering around for like three hours and, oh, no. and a half. And yeah, I was just exhausted at, at last. And 
yeah, I just stopped in somewhere and then I finally <laughs> found that theater. Oh. Just yeah, by luck. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, I, how fortunate. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> At least. So you'd come from the airport mm -hmm. to that area and mm -hmm. the taxi driver just dropped you off someplace or Yeah, I uh, went by train I and see. then I yeah, stood at the train station and I went to the city and I found nothing. <laughs> so yeah. Are you pretty good with finding locations? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I can't actually come back to the uh, place in the restaurant after I come to the uh, restroom. It's mm -hmm. like how bad I am, <laughs> and I yeah. It's I mean when I actually was little, I really always felt so nervous about that particular stuff. That mm -hmm. uh, I mean to find the location because I mean I I never got really nervous before the stage or before the competition but mm -hmm. <laughs> to find the location was always wow yeah <laughs> so so you have uh, traveled all over the place mm -hmm. and I imagine that you have some favorite competitions what would be one of your most memorable competitions uh well definitely Tchaikovsky that mm -hmm. I went um two years ago mm -hmm. I just enjoyed so much being mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and playing there and I really didn't think about competition at all and I just loved playing on that stage, that historical stage wow. and that was just great. How did yeah. that feel to be on that stage? <laughs> and so many incredible people have been there. Right, exactly. So yeah, I mean the, I clearly remember the moment that I first um, came on the stage mm. for the rehearsal and I felt like so many historical um, people who were on that stage mm -hmm. will actually speak to me mm -hmm. in that moment. And uh, it really was a spiritual kind of moment. Wow. Yeah. So who, uh, for the benefit of the audience mm -hmm. uh, who's listening and watching the show, mm -hmm. who are some of the people who performed there? Well, there are composers like Shostakovich and also Katsuturian that you mm -hmm. said. <laughs> so many great Russian composers and also so many legendary pianists like Van Cliburn, Horvitz, Richter, Rubinstein, everyone, just mm -hmm. basically everyone. So, wow. yeah. So just that whole atmosphere must have given you such, uh, such energy. And you said that it was like a spiritual experience yeah. almost. Yeah, almost. <laughs> you just got their energy just yeah. coming through your body. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. Fantastic. Mm. Wow. Well, you know, I'm sure that uh, that not only did, did they give you some energy, but your performing there will give future oh. performers there <laughs> some really good energy too. Well, hopefully. <laughs> Among Korean pianists, Son Yeorum has made great accomplishments with her excellent musicality and masterful techniques. She is even called the Cinderella of the Classical Music Society because of her mastery of the piano. People are really gifted at something, um, you know, whether it's uh, you know, visual arts or music. A lot of times, parents make the decision, difficult decision, mm -hmm. to send the kids abroad. Mm -hmm. Even though Korea has come so far in terms of the excellent training that's available, um, you didn't go abroad to study abroad um, for music mm -hmm. until a lot later than mm -hmm. a lot of maybe some of your peers would have. Mm -hmm. Why did you not go? Uh, early on mm. when many other people were well yeah especially it was really fashionable when I was little mm -hmm. and I remember there was one period of time that I also really wanted to go to um, America mm -hmm. uh, that was when I was um, 12 years mm -hmm. old after I won this um, Tchaikovsky junior competition and yes. we all were really thinking about it but um, at that time we weren't really financially strong mm -hmm. enough and also um, yeah also then I met my teacher uh, by the name of Dejin Kim mm -hmm. and we were really satisfied with with his training and and I also got to uh, enroll the um, um, prep school by mm -hmm. uh, of the uh, Korean National University mm -hmm. of Arts and then I also was very happy about this education mm -hmm. and and especially the teacher um, yeah. Mr. Kim I yeah I was very happy about working with them mm -hmm. and yeah so it just naturally 
of them the way. Musicians and artists who do travel abroad, mm -hmm. or they not just travel abroad, but they study abroad, mm -hmm. do you think that there's really a huge difference with the training that they can receive outside of uh, their home country, like Korea, for example? Uh, you mean the education itself? Mm -hmm. Well, well, to be honest, not really, mm -hmm. because nowadays it's really, I mean, the whole world is just really tiny now mm -hmm. and yeah you, you can actually go abroad as whenever you want mm -hmm. and you can go wherever you want and I mean it's really also the internet gives mm -hmm. you a lot of information and mm -hmm. and it's it's even even a lot different uh, compared to the time that I was growing up mm -hmm. so and it's also developing now so I'm sh pretty sure you can you can have as good education as you get uh, America in Korea mm -hmm. and there are good teachers here too and mm -hmm. but um, it's not really about it's not only about the education itself it's about the culture you feel and mm -hmm. you you um, yeah, you are living in, and mm -hmm. so that's why I, I chose to um, go to Germany after mm -hmm. I graduated here. I see. And, yeah. Now, looking at a lot of maybe uh, peer pianists who decided to go abroad uh, at such a young age, uh -huh. do you feel that you're much more comfortable um, having gone as an older mm -hmm. person as opposed to going when you're really young? Uh, I think is of course, pros and cons, mm. but um, uh, I feel for myself that I did well because mm -hmm. I also, as I told you before at the at the beginning, that I, I am strongly f uh, feeling to myself that I am Korean mm -hmm. and I have a strong bond to here yeah. and it, it gives me sort of um, certain type of um, maybe confidence mm -hmm. or, or some kind of strong identity mm -hmm. of myself mm -hmm. that I feel comfortable to mm -hmm. at least somewhere. Yeah. And I, I see some other kids who are just sent, sending to um, abroad at yeah. the age of you know seven or eight, and yeah. they are kind of lost in some ways. Mm -hmm. And you know, of course, not everybody, but of course, it's different by case by case. Sure. But yeah, but well, I, I feel fortunate of myself yeah. that I yeah. You know, I think that uh, regardless of nationality mm -hmm. or ethnicity, there's something really special about being able to be uh, associated with uh, your own culture and your right. own group. Mm -hmm. And that also gives someone a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, we can get confidence from a lot of different mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. but uh, to have the confidence that you're very much loved by your family mm -hmm. and also supported by sure. your fellow Koreans yeah. must have given you a lot more strength and confidence to pursue what you really want to do because it's challenging. So. Yeah. yeah I I think so. I strongly mm. agree to what you're saying. Yeah, so maybe that's uh, my strength <laughs> is. <laughs> you know, you are a brilliant pianist, and I'm curious if there are any songs that you have yet to try that mm. you're dying to learn. Uh, well, yeah, there are many. There yeah. are um, many pieces that I haven't really learned before. Mm -hmm. And I also, there are, there are pieces that I actually kept for such age that I thought of myself that maybe I'm too young. Mm. So, yeah, there are some pieces. So, for example, uh, what age do you think <laughs> you should play what type of music? Uh, well, for example, like uh, some sonatas by Beethoven, mm -hmm. I think it's worth to um, uh, to play it several times as time goes by. Mm -hmm. So, um, maybe I can also repeat playing that um, mm. Uh, later time. Mm -hmm. uh, also, some pieces by Schumann, I think it will also be sounding different when I'm playing in um, yeah later stage of my life. Now, yeah. do you think that's because uh, of the life experiences that you bring to the the piano keyboard, mm -hmm. or is it because uh, your your hands are acting in a different <laughs> way than before? What would be the reason why you um, wait? Yeah, uh, mostly because of the first reason that you said. Also the, uh, you know, there are certain feelings that a composer wanted to bring on mm -hmm. that, uh, I mean, there can be certain, you know, sense of um, feelings that composers uh, felt in their, their uh, later stage in their mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And this kind of thing that mm -hmm. some compositions would bring some feelings of teenage love or mm. you know um, some uh, fresh feelings of you know uh, early stage of life mm -hmm. but some are you know different mm -hmm. so yeah
What are some of the songs that you found very difficult to play, and how do you kind of push past the difficult uh, nature of mm. a certain composition? Mm. I would say um, Beethoven. Mm. Beethoven is always uh, very, very difficult because of many reasons, but mm -hmm. one of the reasons is that he really took a deep consideration for each piece and it's not really something like Mozart would just write as he feels mm -hmm. and Schubert would just, you know, um, deliver the uh, melodies that he, you know, is given by mm -hmm. some, you know, God or mm -hmm. whoever. <laughs> but Beethoven would always really uh, take um, such a serious consideration mm -hmm. for each note and mm -hmm. yeah, it uh, also takes uh, a lot of, you know, same thing to mm -hmm. us too, mm -hmm. so maybe, yeah. You know, I'd say that uh, of a lot of the uh, composers, um, one of my favorites is definitely Beethoven. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that it's incredible that he was you know, deaf, like mm. practically, mm -hmm. like unable to hear, and mm -hmm. that he would. There are stories of him putting his uh, piano, e yeah. uh, ear to the piano right, to right. feel the vibrations yeah. and whatnot. So I wonder if, uh, because of that type of effort that went into mm. these compositions, that it's just that much more difficult to try to get the energy from. Maybe, yeah, yeah maybe the struggle that he felt, mm -hmm. and yeah, mm -hmm. I mean the hardness of his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe all together. As a pianist, I'm sure that it's important to master the techniques of whatever piece is given to you and it's important to sh share the story and the emotions that you feel as mm -hmm. you're playing with the audience. Do you feel that you're able to effectively communicate those emotions mm -hmm. through your music that the audience will really understand? Mm, well, I feel so. That's mm -hmm. what I feel on a stage mm -hmm. but it's it's really hard to describe what, what it exactly is. Mm -hmm. and. Maybe it's our fantasy that we we want to believe in that way, but I, I, I certainly feel that there's something like what we can call communication between us and audience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There there are certain moments that I, I really feel so connected to mm -hmm. the audience that I I can I can really feel every vibes that they make mm -hmm. and you know, the um th their attention that I just really feel. Mm -hmm on a stage but it's really just hard to describe so mm -hmm. yeah but it's yeah there are certain things maybe that's that's what why we are playing on a stage mm -hmm. maybe that's what we stand for do you ever feel like it's ever tiring for you to communicate with the audience like do you ever feel like <laughs> you know i just want to play this for me i don't care what other people <laughs> think <laughs> well, well not really i think uh, audience is really a most important one of mm -hmm. the most important parts mm -hmm. of the concerts otherwise you can just uh, be at home and listen to the recordings, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, that's what makes concerts special, mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Young but talented Korean musicians, including Son Yeolun, gathered together and presented one of the best chamber music performances by an ensemble. This versatile pianist, who's known to play diverse pieces, described the appeal of chamber music as this. I hear that you write a column for mm -hmm. one of the um, Korean newspapers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just once a month, mm -hmm. and it's been already three years. I can't believe. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. So, what do you normally write about for your column? Um, Eighty percent about music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's what I do and what I most experience. But also about other stuff like some some 
person that I met or some landscape I saw or mm -hmm. yeah, all those random things. Yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah. So what is it like for you to, to write about your experiences? I'm sure that you have so many to choose from. How do you decide <laughs> what to write about? Um, yeah, it's really actually really hard because um, I'm also I'm also an artist, a um, musician, but I'm I'm just a um, pianist, so that I always um, play something what's written. Mm -hmm. But to write something is just to create a whole new thing. So mm -hmm. it's it's actually not really something that I'm always used to. But uh, yeah, so it's really hard to choose the theme and what to write about mm -hmm. and. But I, I enjoy it very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's great. You know, I imagine that uh, as you are not only uh, performing and of course preparing for all the performances and touring, that this music column gives you a voice uh, mm -hmm. with your own voice, mm -hmm. with your own writing, mm -hmm. to share with people mm -hmm. what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. you know? Because uh, the kind of communication through music is mm -hmm. one way. Right. But then you can also communicate through your right. your written word. Mm -hmm. So. So it's like you know, killing two birds with one stone. <laughs> <laughs> two different ways. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that you'll try to continue doing this column for a while? Yeah. Yeah. At least for yeah. Uh, for now. Any yeah. glimpse of some new topics that you'll cover <laughs> in the well, column? <laughs> well, I recently I I just uh, wrote a week ago that I wrote about Russia because I just was in Moscow. Mm -hmm. um, Three weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, and I, uh, as a country, Russia, it's yeah, it means a lot to me uh, mm -hmm. because it's really one of the, uh, uh, one of the uh, maybe greatest city for music and musicians. Mm -hmm. So it always gives me a very special feeling when I, whenever I come to there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I'll be continuing uh, to write about Russia maybe once or twice more. Mm -hmm. So it'll be. <laughs> Two weeks from now. <laughs> Great. I heard that you call yourself a music enthusiast, <laughs> uh, as opposed to a musician. Why is that? <laughs> well, I think it's uh, uh, half part of my um, myself that I am a musician too, but I'm also a music enthusiast. Mm -hmm. That I really uh, love music, a music lover. Mm -hmm. That I just uh, love music so much as a music lover, not mm -hmm. as a musician. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very different uh, part of myself. Now, as a pianist, uh, what types of goals do you have as a pianist and as a musician? Um, well, there are many, like mm -hmm. there are many uh, small things, but one of the things is um, that I want to be the best of myself in the, at the very last stage mm -hmm. of my life. Mm. I mean, it can be when I'm 70 or 80 or 90 mm -hmm. <laughs> or mm -hmm. whenever, but I want to be the best uh, mm. at the very last moment so that I can, uh, I can keep um, uh, becoming better and better mm -hmm. until that mm -hmm. moment. And what is uh, music to you? Um, <laughs> Music is just greatest thing to me. Mm -hmm. It's just greatest thing in the world to me, and it means too much to me. It's it's obviously my life, and it's something that explains um, which words can't really explain, mm -hmm. or I mean, it really um, is the greatest uh, way of communication and way of. Um, um, presenting uh, your life and also yeah it just means a lot to me and uh, apart from music I really can't think of myself and my life so yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
um, if music is is uh, just something that can't be pulled away from your life, mm. then what about the piano specifically? What um, does that mean? <laughs> well, it's it's hard to um, speak about it because piano itself, I love the instrument and I'm really attracted to the uh, um, essential of what piano can bring on mm -hmm. but um, it's for me it's uh, part of music it's just the uh, one of the instrument that I can do well mm -hmm. uh, in music and that's uh, it's like the tool for me mm -hmm. uh, uh, in order to bring the music mm -hmm. so uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yodam, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. I've My really pleasure. enjoyed not only listening to you play, but also just talking to you. You're so normal and, <laughs> and real, except you just happen to have an incredible gift for <laughs> music and piano. Uh, thank you so much for kind of sharing your life with us. And, thank you. Uh, I'm really happy that we had a chance to talk. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. And we hope for all the best <laughs> with you in the future. Thank you. Mm -hmm.